My only regret is I wish my wife could be here to have heard that introduction. I'd probably score really high with her after that. Uh, but there are members of my family here tonight, and I am honored to be asked to speak here. I just spent quite a while speaking with Mr. Toomey, and as we spoke, I guess probably because of our military backgrounds, I began reliving the journey that eventually led me to Dr. Lipov's door and the, the new sense came to life. If I were to describe all the trauma that I've experienced in my life, it would probably take me hours. But I will uh, be able to condense that into a few statements and tell you that before uh, I went to Vietnam, I had experienced some really bad trauma myself, a whole range of homelessness, uh, poverty, sexual molestation. Uh, so I had been taken down a few times and I don't know whether I was wrapped too tight when I went to Vietnam to begin with, but um, I can't make light of that. Uh, I understand what, what trauma is and how it creates this disorder. Because I hear people speak all the time, PTSD, and I could tell you from my own personal experience, I learned how to handle the PTS, not the D. Developing a disorder whereby I could not handle stress made me unable to approach many situations that I otherwise should be in, where I could grow. So for my experience, I was, as Linda said, on my way to a successful life, and uh, the symptoms of PTSD, based on my own experience, they don't go away because, they didn't go away because I was distracted in my profession or uh, in my commitment to my marriage or uh, spending time with my wonderful children. It was always there. I always sensed something about me was not complete. And it caused me to isolate and seek shelter in solitude and hope that in doing so I would come out okay. And I never did. I always came out worse than when I went into solitude. At the point where I completely lost control of my life through substance abuse, uh, I received an intervention from a bunch of Vietnam vets and they told me about this wonderful PTSD program at the uh, VA hospital in upstate New York in Montrose. Uh, so I, uh, I applied to this program and I was screened and I was told, yeah, we think we can help you. We have a 10 month waiting list though. So at the time I was an active drug user and thought here's all this help available to me but I gotta spend another 10 months in the streets before I can get it. And I'm telling you this because the day finally came when I was called and I said, all right, uh, we have an opening for you. So on the day of, I packed my bag and took the train up to this hospital, uh, got over to the building where the Vietnam Veterans Evaluation Treatment Program was being conducted, stepped up to the door and started to ring the bell and I, I couldn't do it. In an instant, I felt this profound sorrow about my life and said, look at, look at yourself. All these things you've accomplished in your life, all the good that you've done, and here you are committing yourself to a mental institution. And uh, 
I couldn't do it. I stepped away, stood in the corner of the lobby, and just cried for about 15 minutes. And uh, finally found the courage, and rang that bell, and began five months of very, very intense treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. And after five months, as Linda said in part of my bio, I spent in another, another 12 years in outpatient treatment because I was determined to free myself from these symptoms, from this disorder, disease, that prevented always the real me from emerging. So I learned a lot about PTSD in the process, and I came to understand uh, how I could conduct a healthy, productive life and find the peace I was looking for. Well, I, uh, I did the best I could, but I knew it wasn't enough. So I began to accept that you know, this is, this is where I'm at. Uh, I can't get anything more out of outpatient. Uh, I understand what the disorder is. Uh, I have a pretty good idea what caused it. So now I gotta man up and conduct the rest of my life. Uh, everything was fine, you know. My children and I were fine. My grandchildren are here tonight. Just, there were plenty of, enough of the right distractions to help me appreciate life and then one Sunday night I'm as Linda said again in my bio I'm watching a 60 minutes program and I see this segment about Dr. Lipov's treatment and I understood immediately there is something else out there there is something that will shine a light on this darkness inside of me and will allow for the real me to surface and I'll feel as whole again as I haven't felt since the day I marched off to war. So I didn't really take Dr. Lipov's treatment fully as a success. As I, I'm not going to get fooled, okay? I got this life here. Uh, it's the best I can get, and it's not worth risking. So I did what I felt I had to do. I researched Dr. Lippo's program until it was like there were no words left to read about it. I spoke with other organizations that uh, conducted the treatment. I spoke with a, a wonderful ward nurse in a, a treatment uh, PTSD pilot program in a VA hospital in Palo Alto, Palo Alto, California. So long story short, I was in the hunt. and. Uh, after I was satisfied that I could, I would look into this, I worked with my psychologist at the VA and I said, listen, uh, this is a big thing and uh, I want to go into it as clean as possible. So I don't want to take Zoloft anymore and I don't want to take Trazodone anymore and I don't want to use clonazepam for my worst moments. Uh, I want to give this treatment an honest shot at reaching me. So I did all that over nine months, and uh, I still remember the day my wife and I leaving upstate New York and driving to Chicago. It was like this mission, this unbelievable mission. Uh, and when I got to the clinic and the day of the treatment, uh, I got this injection, and when I came through, this nurse asked me, how do you feel? I was like, I feel the same. And it's like, okay, you, I'm gonna speak with the doctor, and. The doctor came and said, we will give you a second, uh, a second treatment, something about C5, C2. I mean, I'm a little groggy, but I'm like, all right, you know, I've gone this far. <laughs> Let the doctor run with it. <laughs> so I got the second injection. And when I woke up from that second inje injection, the same nurse was sitting there and she said, how do you feel? And I couldn't speak. I knew something had happened. But I knew this was the seminal moment in my adult life. So I began to cry uncontrollably. And I said to her, I'm afraid to let go. I don't know how I feel. And I can tell you from that experience, I understood as bad as PTSD was, I'd gotten used to it. It was 
like a weird kind of comfort zone. I know what these symptoms are and I know I suffer from them and I know they deprive me of the best things in life, but it's all I have. Going to the other side with this treatment, I don't know what's gonna happen. And what if I'm the one in a million for whom it fails and I get an adverse effect and you know, God knows then. So that was how I left it. I explained to Dr. Lipov, I, uh, I, I feel something, I just don't know what it is. And a few days later, sitting on my couch, I'm desperate for an answer, uh, desperate for a reason to let go. And in a conversation with my son, I'm like, Jay, Jason, my son, I'm like, Jay, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I, I feel something, but it's, I'm in such a, a dark place. Uh, I don't know if it was for me. And he just said, he said, Dad, the static is gone from your voice. Just let it happen, Dad, let it happen. And in almost an instant, bang, it happened. This aura of relaxation came over me and it's like, Dennis, this is, this is the latest version of you. This is that whole other part of post-traumatic stress disorder has left your soul, not your body or your mind, but left your soul. It's okay to let go and feel peace. And so since that happened a few years ago, there have always been times where I'm like, I don't know if that thing really worked. I just, but that's still PTSD, PTSD symptoms. And it's, and it's me personally, it's just, self-doubt because again I was in the darkness for so long uh, it was creepy trying to emerge from it but if somebody would to say to me today Dennis how do you feel and how did you get where you are I might describe this journey but I would strongly emphasize I got this treatment in Chicago and it took some reassurances from my son for me to let it happen, but when it did, I understood all that research I did, all that questioning and all that self-analysis was for a good thing because it led to who I am. I love New York. Everything that I that I am, I have Dr. Lipov to thank. And if I were in a group of veterans, and I did speak with one veteran who called me a few weeks ago and asked me about this treatment, and he pretty much got this story. I told him, look, uh, if I had to put it into one little nutshell I would say I found the courage to take the risk because I just couldn't handle the burden of this darkness anymore and uh, yeah this treatment was the beacon of light I live with it today I know I'm different it's not very hard to get up here and talk about it so thank you for your time <laughs>